our work today is to begin to learn how to solve problems using algebra. I'd like to share a little piece of video with you. And as you watch this, I would just like you to think about what questions you have after you see the video piece. So after you watch the video, as we've seen the movie, uh, my question to you is, what question do you have after watching this? And when we've done this exercise in class, you know, students will kind of look at this and say, well, you know, what, what's the point of, of getting in a fight over a shovel? And you remember the, uh, the one worker says, look, smaller shovel, smaller hole. Oh, so does it take less time? Is that less dirt? There's lots of questions that, uh, that someone might have. And are these things that we could figure out? And eventually, my students have settled on the past into trying to figure out how much dirt gets dug out of a hole, and then maybe how much dirt, you know, less uh, is the smaller shovel, and is that worth getting in a fight over? So could we possibly figure that out? And in the class, we once we decide that, you know, yeah, we want to look at that, we start thinking about, well, what information will we need to know? And we looked up online and tried to find um, the, the length of the, of the shovel, how long is it? Because uh, the shovel, the hole has to be that deep and that wide, right? Uh, and so we can use that to find the radius and the height and then use that information to find the volume of the hole. So we went online, we found the formula for volume of a cylinder and entered in the information that we knew and we found out that that's about 98 cubic feet of dirt. Said, well, great, what does that mean? And then we tried to figure out uh, how long that would take and so forth. But we were able to come up with a number to answer our question uh, by taking that information and uh, plugging it into uh, a formula. The information that you see on the top of the screen, we identified what R stood for, the radius of the circle, uh, and also what the H stood for, the height of the, of the cylinder, and uh, what V would stand for, the volume of the holes being dug. And that's called defining your terms. So when we use algebra to solve problems, uh, first, we're going to write the equation in words, uh, and then write an equation using math symbols. We had a chance to practice that in class the other day. And many times, uh, there's actually a formula that we can use, so we don't have to stress ourselves uh, over coming up with an equation on our own, although we found out on, on uh, last time that we met that if we just um, express the relationship in words, we can easily translate that directly over. So we've got a couple of definitions I'd like you to write down at the top of your notes. The first is uh, a verbal model, which is the equation written in words. And sometimes you'll be asked uh, on various quizzes or tests on the I-step um, to write down what is the relationship. So we're going to write that in words first. Uh, and then also on the I-step, many times you're asked to write down an equation that you could use to solve a problem. And that is an algebraic model, the mathematical statement that we'll use to solve the problem. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Uh, example number one, the driving distance between Boston and Cleveland is about 660 miles. When you make that trip in a total of 12 and a half hours, the question is to find your average speed. So we start to look at the information that we have, and one of the things we ask ourselves is, is there a formula that relates distance and time and speed? And we remember from middle school that there is. We know the distance is equal to rate times time. So let's define our terms. Do we know the distance? Yes, it's 660 miles. 
Uh, do we know anything else? Well, we know the time is 12.5 hours. And then the rate is average speed. Okay, so we've defined our terms. We've got a formula that we can use. What's our next step here? Well, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to substitute in the values that we have for the variables. We're going to have one unknown variable, and we're going to solve for that. We, remember, we found out last time we can solve for that unknown first. We calculate it ready, or we can plug in and, and then work from there. Uh, so if we're trying to solve for R, we see that we can divide both sides by T. So the rate is equal to distance divided by time. So if we plug those things in, the distance is 660 miles, and the time, 12 and a half hours. And we think about, well, what units do we use for average rate of speed? And, and that's miles per hour, so we can see that we have miles in the numerator, hours in the denominator. This makes sense. So our next step, then, is to go to a calculator and simplify this fraction. And so you'll tap in 660 divided by 12.5, and you'll see 52.8 miles per hour. And you'll always want to kind of keep an eye on uh, the words, how the question is given. You may be asked to round to a certain decimal place. Uh, and make sure that you pay attention to that information as it's given to you in the question. But for now, this one will stay on the way as we can see that this is 52.8 miles per hour, or about 53 miles an hour. Let's try another example. So in this example, in a table, we're given heights from the ground to the top of the first few stories of a building in the public plaza in Denver. And our job is to find the height from the ground to the top of the ninth story. So we kind of take a look at the information and one of the things we can do is we can start to see, well, how does this change? So 48.5 minus 36, if I go to my calculator, that's 12.5. 61 to 48.5, if I go to my calculator on that one, that also is 12.5. 73.5 from 61, that's 12.5. So we find the difference between the lobby and the second floor, second and third, third and fourth, fourth and fifth is constant. Now, you want to tread carefully here. The, the tendency is to say, oh, it's 12 and a half feet for every floor. They're asking for nine floors. I'm just going to multiply 12 and a half times nine, and I'm going to be good. But look what happened here. From the floor to the lobby is 36. Uh, so that part is not constant with the rest of them. So let's think about what we're doing here. So we know from 0 to the second floor is 36. So we're always going to have 36 added on to something, which is the number of floors times 12.5. So total height is... 12.5 plus 36. Is that going to give us an answer? Well, let's remember what's going on here. We have nine floors, but the first floor is this lobby, which is 36. So when we do this, we have to have the number of floors minus 1 times 12.5 plus 36. So now let's write the equation we could use for this. So height, we'll use h, is is where the equal sign goes. We'll use F for floor number, minus 1, times 12.5, plus 36. So we have nine floors. Don't forget to define your terms. Height, total height. F equals floors. So the ninth floor is what we're looking for. So 9 minus 1, that's 8 times 12.5 plus 36. So now we can simplify that. We go to the calculator. So 
4.5 times 8, that's 100, plus 36. So the total height is 136 feet. So this is our process. When we are solving problems using algebra, our job is to verbally relate uh, the situation, the variables, collect them in a, in a word sentence, and then translate that over into a mathematical sentence. So we'll get a chance to practice some of those things coming up next in class. And first, what I'd like to ask you to do is go ahead and summarize the things that you learned today. Three things that you learned, two things that you want to know more about, and one big question that you still have, and then any other ways that you want to go ahead and take notes, mark to yourself sketches or graphic organizers or connections to other classes, you can mark those here on your notes page.